Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So 31-year-old Ohio resident and former Army National Guardsman Matthew Honigford traveled to D.C. with his mother. Um, so another mother-boy date, I guess. And check this out. Honigford had been reported as absent without leave from the National Guard because he just decided to stop attending weekend drills. This was shortly after the 2020 election. According to Honigford's drill sergeant, he said his sister was sick, which we found out she is sick. She Well, she was sick. She, sadly, she passed away. But he said he needed to take care of her. But Honigford also said he didn't trust the state of the country since Joe Biden was elected. So he just stopped going. Um, he later told the FBI a different story, too. He claimed that he went AWOL because of COVID and because of vaccination concerns. So anyway, on January 6th, Honigford and his mom headed to the Capitol and Honigford was seen at the front of the mob. He was confronting officers and he was heard on body cam video screaming at them, quote, you better think fucking twice. You are about to meet a million pissed off fucking people. You don't have to do this. A minute later, he bent down, he picked up a water bottle from the ground and then he started waving it around. He was like taunting the police, like threatening to throw it at them. So an officer yelled at him and said, don't do it. And Honigford scream, screamed back, quote, do your fucking job and arrest those blank suckers in there. Do your job, do your job, do your job. So again, some words I can use, some words I can't because of the YouTube gods. They'll demonetize my video. So anyway, um, he cursed at them some more. And then he started to chant to the crowd, push. So then Honigford was seen, he lifted up a flagpole that he was carrying and he held it horizontally and he was pushing it into an officer's upper chest, basically into their clavicle area. So the officer and Honigford were seen, they struggled over the flagpole for about 20 seconds and Honigford was heard yelling, quote, I don't want to do this. Um, I mean, apparently you do, right? Or, or you wouldn't you wouldn't be doing it. So the officer managed to push the flagpole down and then Honigford moved back into, or moved the flagpole back into a vertical position. But he continued to shout at the officers. He said, quote, nobody wants to do this. You have a choice right now, right now. So Honigford then yelled forward to the mob and he was gesturing for, for them to move forward with his hand. And he told the police, quote, there's no one behind you. There are a million of us. And then Honigford continued to gesture to the crowd and he was screaming up. Then Honigford kept reaching out. He was trying to touch the police and they told him stop. And he said, quote, how am I supposed to bless you guys? And quote, I'm trying to fucking pray, guys. <laughs> So a minute later, or minutes later, Honigford went from praying to attacking. So he grabbed the police barricade, bent his knees, so he crouched down, and then he used his full body weight, and he pushed the barricade into the officers. So one of the officers grabbed onto Honigford's jacket and was trying to stop him, and so Honigford leaned away and then kicked at the barricade and kicked it into the officer, which hit the officer in the legs. So the officer later reported that when he grabbed Honigford's jacket, Honigford either punched him or hit the officer's hand. Um, while all of this is going on, other members of the mob were pulling the barricades apart. So Honigford was yelling, quote, pull it down. And then he moved over to an area where the barricades had been separated and Honigford grabbed onto the barricade and he pulled on it and then he carried it back into the crowd. So at that point, the police were forced to fall back. They had to create a new defensive line. Their initial line completely collapsed. And once again, 
Honigford maneuvered to the front of the mob, maneuvered to the front of the police, their new defensive line. This time he picked up a long silver pole from the ground and he handed it to the police. And then as he handed it over, Honigford told the officers, quote, I don't want us to have this. So one good thing. Um, then he quickly turned on them again. He started yelling, quote, guys, there's a million people here, a million. And then Honigford moved to an area directly in front of some of the officers. Um, it was like this low concrete wall. So he was actually elevated above the officers and he crouched down and he was shouting at them. He was only like two or three feet away from their faces. And he was screaming at them, quote, there are people that want to hang people. They don't want to hang you. They want to hang those blank suckers inside this building who scurried like cockroaches when we started to storm. And then what do they do? They send you to do their bidding, to do their dirty work. Nancy Pelosi's got a fucking $20,000 fridge with $10 pints of ice cream in them. What the fuck do you have in your house? What the fuck do you make? This is your life that you might be putting on the line. And then he started screaming more about Nancy Pelosi's fridge, her ice cream for a while. And then oddly, he started talking about her going home and masturbating that night. I'm not kidding. Then Honigford warned them, quote, you're going to be fighting for your lives tonight. If you keep this up, you will be fighting for your lives. He also shouted, quote, None of you wanted to take a St. Christopher medal because I wanted to protect you guys. None of you wanted that. Do you know what is coming? What is down these steps? There is a storm down there. So, yeah. <laughs> but MAGA's not weird at all, right? Anyway, he left the Capitol grounds sometime after that. I think we all know what he did when he got home. It was on his mind. <laughs> um, so Honigford was arrested on November 21st of 2023, and he was charged with two counts of assaulting officers, civil disorder, entering restricted grounds, and two counts of disorderly conduct. In February of 2024, Honigford pleaded guilty to one count of assault. So he was looking at up to eight years in prison, three years of probation and a fine of up to $250,000. But the prosecutor requested only 27 months in prison, three years of probation and 2000 in restitution. Far too weak. And guess what? The military gave him a complete pass. After all of this, after he blew off his weekend drills, they gave him an honorable discharge. It's absolutely unreal. And these jackasses want to question Tim Wall's 24 years of military service. Seriously? So anyway, U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin presided over Honigford's case. She is usually one of the best January 6th judges. I don't know why, but she ended up sentencing Honigford to only 19 months in prison, two years of probation, and 2,000 in restitution. I have a feeling she went easy on him, number one, because he has no criminal history. Also, he now has three children and a wife. Since January 6th, he now has three children and a wife. Evidently, he had a shotgun wedding in November of 2022, and then their first child was born the following month. His new wife already had a child from a previous relationship, and Honigford has now adopted her, which good on him. Um, if he can turn his life around and become a good influence. And then they had a third child together in July of this year. And the prosecutor said Honigford is the sole provider for the family. I'm sorry, but I don't think that should be factored into his sentence. He knew the FBI was looking for him. He knew he committed violent crimes and that the FBI was searching for him because they put out his photo. So it's completely irresponsible to bring children into the world knowing that at any minute you could be hauled off to prison. That's on him. He shouldn't catch a break because of his selfishness. 
So we've seen this time and time again in, in these cases or these people knew even some of them had already been arrested and then they go and have a child. The ultimate selfishness. I mean, just the height of self-centeredness. So anyway, um, if I hear any more, I will let you know, but another one who won't be voting for Trump in November. Ah, darn. All right. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like this video, share it, become a subscriber if you have not, become a donor if you possibly can. Links are below in the description box on YouTube and the podcast. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.